tonight on Focal Point. I felt that the older audience was underserved in a radio sense in the greater Belfast area and also that there's not so much really hyper-local radio just looking at Belfast. The distinctiveness comes from the fact that we'll focus on those 60s and 70s tracks. It is a community station. We are all volunteers. You always need to ensure that you are building an infrastructure that's attractive to investors. But I think that in terms of, of people who live in the city, commuting uh, more and more by their bike, and so we made a decision. It was vitally important that we brought a, a new bridge. When you don't see the making process, it's very easy just to imagine it just comes out in no time at all. At face value, it may seem that, oh, it, oh you can just run that up in no time. And then things don't always go right. And there's times you have to redo things. People are definitely taken aback by the level of time that goes into each piece. People will enjoy it besides anything else. But really, I think us as rural people, we're by nature a very friendly group of people. And I think that um, the initiatives, the things that they're going to do, the events, the fun days, the youth events, the older people's events, it's really about bringing people together. It's about tackling isolation. And it's about breaking down the barriers that are there and making sure that people have someone in a, in a group that they can turn to. The excitement really is now building. We're about 45 minutes away from our launch, which will be at exactly 2 o'clock. And the first sound that will be heard on the radio station will be the chimes of the Assembly Building's clock, which is a very familiar sound to everybody in the city centre. And that'll be followed by the opening announcement and the opening song. So there were an awful lot of baby boomers and people who are of my age group, basically um, 55 and onward. And uh, we all lived through the wonderful late 50s, early 60s, into the hippie 70s, and then, you know, we kind of wised up then. But there's a big market for, for music from that particular era, and, and for Radio 4 people like that. This age group really love radio. You know, there's, there's different things going on in the young, younger demographic of radio at the moment. In fact, just today, same day as us, Apple is launching their radio service aimed at younger people because they're falling away from traditional radio services. Whereas for the older demographic, they still hold traditional radio very dear. It's still part of their lives. Uh, it's also part of how they connect with their communities and how they connect locally with news, events, people, you know. So I, I think that's one thing that's, that, that's very different. And to be able to serve just the older audience keep going back to these things but just to serve just the older audience and just the older audience in the Belfast area means we we can give a very special kind of service that the other stations just aren't able to provide you know they've got a wider broadcast area they've got to try and satisfy maybe everyone in the age group um, or they're particularly targeted quite often at the younger demographic you know. I think the distinctiveness comes from the fact that we'll focus on those 60s and 70s tracks because a lot of stations will play some of them, but it's only part of what they do. So I think the music and probably the presenters that are on the programme are going to relate to people of that age group. My background, I've been in radio, this is my 40th year in the medium, so it's been my career right from way back when. I've worked in a range of different radio stations, enjoyed my time hugely with all of them, and now it's wonderful to have a chance to do something that's in a different sector, but has a very definite need. We really felt that the older audience was underserved in a radio sense in the greater Belfast area, and also that there's not so much really hyper-local radio just looking at Belfast. So we're very targeted in those two ways and um, very different from any other station because it is a community station. We are all volunteers. Nobody's being paid. Everyone is here because they love radio and they want to be part of the project, which is amazing. Everybody on the station is a volunteer. I'm a volunteer and we're here because we want to produce good radio. Uh, we got together with Volunteer Now, one of the agencies, and they were extremely helpful in identifying people interested in coming on board to be considered for the radio. It's one of those things that we really wanted to do. We wanted to bring people who had an interest in radio and say to them, look, we'll teach you everything you need to know. All you need to want to do is be enthusiastic and want to do it and feel like you've got something that you want to share 
with the audience. And the amazing thing about how technology has developed is that it's become a lot more user friendly. I mean, being a radio presenter even 20 years ago and driving a studio was a pretty complex task. And a lot of those tasks have been simplified by technology, which is great because it reduces those barriers. And it means older people that maybe do have a little bit more technological fear can access the technology easily. And um, we've got lots of older volunteers coming in learning to operate a radio desk for the first time, and it's brilliant. Feedback's very important. It's part of the requirement placed on us by Ofcom. So we'll be using all the social media. We've been tweeting regularly on a countdown basis. We have a Facebook page. We have a website. And we're very keen that people respond and tell us what they think. It's a soft launch. We want to hear over the summer just what people make of what they hear. The whole thing about radio is it's live. So you want to maximise that live moment. So you might have phone calls coming in. You've got texts. You've got all of the social media happening now and it's true that older people are taking up social media in droves uh, and that's something that we will be making the most of at Belfast 89 as well. I think we have an interesting collection of people in our opening schedule. Uh, there's some known names, some unknown names and I think that's a very dynamic combination and the key thing is the station should be fun. It's a real thrill and I think particularly because there are so many other people involved. You know, this is a, it's an army that's built this thing. It's not the small number of directors there are, it's not just the presenters. There's an army of people here in the background doing all sorts. I mean, we've painted the walls, you know what I mean? We've laid the wires. It's been a labour of love from the beginning and this whole army of volunteers has helped us do that and they're going to help us build an audience as well and that's what Belfast 89 FM is going to be all about. This is Belfast 89 FM. Yeah.